Well, hello. I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing? Hopefully great. I'm swell myself. And today's show is going to be pretty easy. Um, I did this one other time. I'm guessing it was like 10 days ago or so. Um, and I'll probably do it one more time before draft night once we get this finalized, but we're getting pretty close. And this is the Steelers pre-draft visits. I want to go over them, touch on some guys that we didn't mention before. You know, some more of these are coming out. There were guys in the building, you know, on Wednesday, you know, so, um, so let's just get dig right in. Michael Penix Jr. is listed as sometime in April he's scheduled to come. I'm not going to look too much into that. I don't know if he'll make it or not when it's all said and done. I'm sure he's being pulled every direction possible. And I do think there's legitimate interest, but I have a hard time believing Michael Penix Jr. is going to be a Steeler, quarterback out of Washington. His teammate, Dylan Johnson, is also a date unknown. He's a running back. I don't have any idea why they'd be interested in him. It, it, it's a pre-draft visit. Um He's a sixth, seventh round type guy. Maybe there's an injury they want to check out. I don't know. But he also has not been here, so maybe that doesn't happen either. Now, those two aside, I just want to get them out of the way. Everyone else <laughs> is a wide receiver. Looks like there's about six of them listed so far. An offensive lineman. Looks like there's about eight of them. A defensive lineman, a big guy. There's just like six or seven of those. Or a corner. And there's about six or seven of those. So I think they're telling you, I don't know there's a lot of smoke screens going on here, folks. I mean, I think they're pretty much telling you what positions they're going to draft on day one and two. Now, of course, they could take someone that's not on this list, of course, and they will, you know, I mean, but there's not a lot of uh, dancing around what their, their interests are. I'm thrilled that uh, Ricky Pearsall, is is on the list. Florida wide receiver. I am warming up to him more and more and more. And I've always liked him. My fear is he won't be there at 51. Um, I think he's a really good prospect. Not just a slot. Does it all. He might be my seventh best receiver in this class. I think he'd fit in really well. I think he'd be a starter slash slot um, quickly. Uh, I am also a Malachi Corley fan from Western Kentucky. Everyone compares him to Debo Samuel, which is far-fetched, but that's how comps work. But that's how he plays. He's very physical. He's really good after the catch. Get him the ball quickly. Can hand it to him on jet sweeps. He would fit in really well also. South Carolina's Xavier Leggett also seems to be really getting steam. Like, for example, Mel Kuyper came out with his mock, and he came, and Leggett went 32nd overall. Really rocked up strong player with great speed, straight line. It's kind of a late breakout guy, though, to kind of a one-year wonder. Boy, he's physical. He's hard to bring down. He's a deep threat. There's a lot to work with there. Um, he wouldn't be cheap, though, on draft day. Two cheaper guys are interesting to me. That's Taj, Taj Washington from USC and Luke McCaffrey, uh, Christian's brother, from Rice. Both are slots. Both are round five, give or take. Maybe a little earlier, maybe a little later. Both will block. Both are physical. I really like their playing demeanor. I think that's really interesting to me as a slot type. And then the last receiver is A.D. Mitchell out of Texas. And he's different. I mean, he is somebody to consider at 20. He is really gifted. A lot of George Pickens to his game. Great leaper, great body control. His highlights are incredible. He ran a phenomenal 40. He's a starting prototypical X receiver type, you know, I mean, and he would not be cheap. Maybe it's a trade down if you're considering him. Um, really intriguing about that one, though, to be honest with you. I, I, I like that he came in. I'm mean, going to do all the homework you can on him. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up to minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs in inline game betting contests and all your best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile device. 
Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team. And remember to use our promo code, that's Believe, B L E A V, for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. All right, let's get into these deep offensive tackles. Um, Travis Glover, I kind of told you about before. He'd be a later round project pick, but he's a pow mover from Georgia State. Talked about him in the first go round. Um, and then there's some bigger name guys, too. I mean, Talise Fawaga from Oregon State. He's a guy I've been saying I think is a run to the podium if he's there, a 20 type player, r- pure right tackle. Very explosive out of his stance. Nasty, excellent run blocker. Little bit short armed, maybe he's a guard, but you would definitely start his career at tackle. And the same is true for Troy Fontenot from Washington. He's a little shorter than Fuaga, but he has nice long arms for a shorter tackle. You would start him out at right tackle. I think he's like a Pro Bowl type guard, though. Um, both these guys would be really welcome additions to any offensive line, but they would be your right tackles right off the bat. First round picks for sure. I also think Amarius Mims is a first round pick. He has not been in yet, but he's scheduled. Don't know when he had his pro day on Wednesday. So who knows? I have to go go look at the uh, the numbers there. It wasn't his pro day. It was just a workout for him and Brock Bowers. Uh, they had not worked out yet. I, I, we've talked about Mims a ton. I mean, would I take him at 20? Maybe. He's going to need coached up. I mean, he is just over 100 pass sets in his whole career. I mean, that's a very slow, low number at Georgia. They'll know everything about him. Broderick Jones will know everything about him. Immense, immense talent. Um, He's a freebie because he's a pit and he just has to walk next door. But Matt Concla- Gon Claves is interesting to me. Good run blocker. Um, I would – consider him in like the fourth round pure tackle interesting player I mean if you don't go tackle early adding him to the mix I think makes a ton of sense another guy I'm really warming up to and probably at 51 is Brandon Fisher from Notre Dame Uh, Alt is their left tackle for the Fighting Irish and he is their right tackle he's pretty close to a plug and play prospect like if you don't go tackle in round one You take Fisher in round two, you pretty much pencil him in as your starting right tackle, and Jones is your left. It's pretty strong, you know what I mean? Because obviously you'd had something else in round one. Fisher is a name to know, and I think he will be very much in the mix if they don't go tackle right off the board, right off the the bat there. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, we've talked about a ton. He was in almost the whole – he was in recently – um, I'm sure they're going to do some some medical stuff on him. Uh, he could be in the round one mix for sure. Uh, tape is really impressive. So he would be a starting center day one. Now let's talk about the D linemen. Again, these are all interior big bodied guys. Brandon Fisk, we talked about last time around. I don't quite know where he fits, but he's a bundle of energy and athleticism. I don't know that he's an every down player, a little bit short armed. Christian Boyd is one I'm excited about, too. I mean, he's more of a nose for the Steelers, but he's been dominant at Northern Iowa. Pretty good tester, all in all. Has a lot of power, but can move. Darius Robinson, we talked about before, too. Missouri did a lot of stand-up stuff this past year. I think he's much closer to Cam Hayward than TJ Watt, though, but long arms. I think he's going to go in the first round. Big, heavy hands. Looks body beautiful as does Mason Smith from LSU. This was a heavily, heavily recruited kid with really impressive traits, but several injuries at LSU kind of slowed him down dramatically from his freshman season. But he ended his career at LSU really strong. His last couple of games were some of his best. Um, don't know exactly where he goes, prob- somewhere on day two. Logan Lee from Iowa is another long-limbed, Louder milk body type guy that plays hard. He would be a mid-round, really welcome addition. I like that one a lot. Now we're going to get into the corners to finish this up. 
Another pit dude. I mean, again, you might as well have all the pit dudes in, but MJ Devonshire is going to get drafted and he would fit. I mean, he's a, um, I think he can do outside and inside a corner. And it seems like a lot of these guys that they're looking at have some position versatility in terms of nickel versus outside. They'll know everything about Devonshire. I think he's probably a fifth round pick. Kentucky's Andrew Phillips is really starting to get some steam as well. Might go late two. I'm guessing more like a third round pick for him. Excellent athlete. Also a great playing demeanor. Plays hard. It'd be a decent sized slot, a little undersized for the outside. I like what he brings to the table a lot. Nate Wiggins is from Clemson is probably a name you know. He's a little different than these guys. I mean, he would be a first rounder, outside corner, skinny. I mean, he's very lean and he can get pushed around at times, but he's kind of an old school, leave me alone on my island, great speed, length, you know, man to man press corner. Those guys don't grow in trees. That's why he's going around one. Max Melton is absolutely one of my favorite from these in, on this list. Um, I don't know that he'll be there at 51. Superb athlete, makes a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage, either out of the slot or as a blitzer. Um, certainly is capable to be an outside player as well. Tough as the day is long. I mean, tough and athletic and productive. I mean, what's not the like? So he would not be in first round consideration for me. But maybe even a trade up in round two to the you know 40th neighborhood, something like that. I'm just kind of throwing things out there. Um, but I like Max Melton a lot. So there you have it. I mean, it's pretty obvious what they're doing with these visits. They're not hiding a whole heck of a lot. I bet several names that I mentioned, at least two, I would say, end up in a Steeler uniform. Oh, I'm just guessing. I, I don't even know why I said that. But there, you can see the type of players they're interested in. Very few of them shock me at all. I mean, they're looking for certain types at certain positions. And there you have it. All right, guys. Take care. Over and out.